um good evening everyone uh really happy to be here with a very very distinguished experienced and a high intellectual caliber panel today with us on this uh, nsc center for behavioral science marketing conference of 2022 uh, let me introduce you to each one of them by turn uh, nitin sethi is the ceo of adani digital labs uh, he brings with him an experience of more than 20 years in leading internet and digital platform companies uh he was the person who was previously responsible for indigo's 6e digital he's worked with quicker.com yatra.com nokri.com uh india times rediff and bharti airtel and he specializes in crafting really great omni channel experience for customers online offline and usable product based insight based on their personas and behavior uh and he is wonderful to speak on this design thinking and digital transformation he has won numerous awards so so many that you know difficult to yeah. count but i'll just pick a couple of names uh the adobe digi 100 list for 2018 and 19 smartest digital marketing leaders by the world digital marketing congress and so on uh so welcome nitin thank you so much for taking the time today pleasure is all mine yeah uh and then we have dr samardas who is the ceo of cp research a strategic marketing research and consulting firm based out of orlando florida he is also a senior alumnus of this institute and a phd in marketing from the university of arizona um he started his career in india with tns mode and spent a lot of time working for companies like burger burger paints where he was a marketing manager uh after his phd he worked as a professor in the university of florida and he's been with his current uh, company that he founded back in 2002 and uh, just like we have a lab over here at the nsc center for behavioral science uh, summer has a really advanced marketing and research experimental research lab for digital marketing in the us and runs a 6000 square feet research lab called the web lab in orlando florida and this has some equipment like we do over here and he does cutting edge research so welcome summer thank you for taking the time thank you thank you urvin then we have professor akshaya lakshmi lakshmi my colleague here uh in the marketing area at the indian institute of management ahmedabad uh akshaya has a phd from the university of iowa uh and she works in the area of marketing communications with some really interesting publications in journal of advertising one of which was recently awarded uh you know after 20 years i still don't have an award for my research article so akshaya you know i look up to you uh so maybe one of these days i'll still get one award even though i'm like kind of over the hill now in some ways for research uh welcome akshaya uh, thank you for being here thanks sarvan for the nice introduction uh so ladies and gentlemen uh the way we will structure this uh conversation for the next 50 minutes to an hour is i'm going to request the panelists uh in turn uh to take about 10 maybe 12 minutes to take us through the digital consumer and how one relates to the digital consumer uh from their experience and or research the marketing communication dimension the experience dimension from their own experience what your experience has been especially in the recent past uh and once you are done with that we'll start off with uh uh the youngest member of the panel so i'm going to ask akshaya to lead us off and then we will go to nitin and then we will go to summer so youngest to the oldest more ex most experienced <laughs> and once we're done uh then we uh, i'm going to take down some key points and try to bring it together in a conversation with some questions and my own observations okay. and then we will also open it up to the audience at the end uh and say take, take some questions from them uh so over to you akshaya thanks arvind i will share my screen uh i have a few slides just a just five slides given the time uh 
So what I'm going to talk about today comes uh, mainly from the kind of uh, research that I do. So I'm going to talk about a uh, uh, couple of uh, research studies which I have done where we look at how consumers engage uh, online. And uh, I'm, I'm also going to talk about a little bit about my own lived experience uh, in this context, which I think is uh, quite relevant. So what has internet and smartphones done? Uh, we have these days a lot of cheap phones and a lot of uh, cheap data plans, which has enabled a lot of consumers to uh, come online and engage with each other online and engage with brands, engage uh, with different communities online. So we, we have seen not just democratization of information, but there is democratization of even access because of the availability of both cheap phones and data plans. And the democratization of access is very critical because uh, suddenly information is not just uh, a privilege available to few people, but it is, uh, it, it is widely uh, available to a significant portion of the population. And it is very this has huge implications in various ways. So I'll just talk about two of my studies in that context. Uh, one, uh, so, and both the studies, we look at online communities, how these online communities uh, influence each other, uh, uh, how individuals in the online communities uh, engage with each other and what does it mean for their own uh, development and for their own empowerment and in and that's the first study and in the second study i'll talk about how what is that people like when they uh, when they go online when they what is the kind of language they appreciate what is the kind of whom do they want to uh, take advice from uh, and like all this has led to the rise of niche groups and niche apps so niche apps probably uh, the next two panelists will be able to talk about better but i'll talk a little bit about the niche groups uh, my first study is uh, where we looked at uh, how do uh, middle-aged Indian women uh, engage, use internet and what does it mean for them personally and what does it mean for their uh, family. So this, is, this sample is uh, quite unusual in, in research at least. We, all, we always tend to look at uh, college students and young uh, people. So uh, I'm very uh, proud of this study because we reached out to uh, 300 plus middle-aged Indian women and we asked them, how do they use uh, the internet? Are they active users of internet? Uh, active users, by that I mean, do they post regularly? Uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or any platform? Uh, do they share information regularly? We all, whether were they passive users, were they just uh, absorbing information, not really sharing much? We also asked them about their social media use. Uh, how did they, uh, uh, did they again post frequently on WhatsApp? Did they share information with different people? Uh, after having gathered information on the internet use and uh, social media use, we asked them questions on empowerment. Uh, we asked them how whether they felt confident, whether they felt uh, uh, or whether they felt uh, co connected to different communities, whether uh, they felt they could raise their voice. So we uh, we measured we uh, measured them on a, on various aspects of psychological empowerment. Basically, not how whether they feel empowered. And then finally, we also ask them questions on their uh, financial situation, whether they have their own bank account, uh, whether uh, they uh, make decisions on uh, household investments, whether, how, uh, whether they make uh, decisions on their children's educational expenditures. So in short, this was the model we were looking at. We looked at whether digital connectivity uh, increased uh, psychological empowerment in uh, uh, in women and whether that led to economic self-sufficiency both for themselves and for uh, spending on their other on other family members and by psych psychological empowerment i mean whether they had belief in themselves whether they showed increased uh, competence whether they felt in control of 
uh, a situation and uh, psychological empowerment not just looks at the individual but it also looks at how the individual feels with respect to the their community so did they feel that they were part of a community did they have strong interpersonal relationships and whether they felt they could uh, engage in collective action to achieve their goals so what we find is that people who actively use the internet or where uh, use the inter uh, act, where active users of the internet they tend to have strong uh, individual self they believe that they could achieve their goals uh, and people who passively used internet or uh, used mostly only whatsapp not necessarily the other parts of the internet but focus mostly on whatsapp and were passive users they felt uh, they belong to a community rather than uh, uh, individual uh, so uh they they felt they were part of community they felt they had strong interpersonal relationships and they could leverage this uh to uh to influence achieve their goals so we find that internet use versus even the way internet is used empowers an individual in different ways so an active user felt more confident about themselves whereas a passive user felt more confident about about using the communities they were part of to uh, live, achieve their goals so uh, someone using uh, uh, internet passively or using whatsapp tend to like i show in this uh, have believe in the communities and they were more willing to uh, they were spending more on their children's education as compared to someone who was uh, actively using the internet so this is this is uh, whereas someone who was actively using the internet felt more confident about themselves and were able to achieve a lot of personal economic self sufficiency goals so this is uh, this again like i said uh, we looked at uh, 300 uh, middle aged indian women we surveyed them and these women were from ahmedabad and bangalore uh, again this was done in fact uh, two years back but the rate at which things have changed in both data plants and smartphones we might find very different outcomes now so this is uh, one study and uh, yeah i i must uh, also mention my lived experience over here so uh, nitin mentioned that uh, his baby is 11 month and 4 days old i have a 7 and a half uh, month old real baby uh, and uh, i i'm uh, part of this uh, a uh, telegram group of mothers where we discuss things uh, first i was part of the pregnancy group then i moved to the uh, breastfeeding group and then i moved to the solids eating group so i have graduated as my child grew older but i have le- learned a lot from these online communities i have learned i've got so much information and i'm a passive user <laughs> i have but i've got so much information and i feel more knowledgeable and and that knowledge has helped me i feel raise do raise my infant with more confidence so this is so in fact it was very interesting that i'm doing all this data analysis and then at the same time i was living it as well i felt so uh, that's my lived experience and i so when these results showed up the way they did i i can i can completely vouch for it based on my own experience the next study is uh, i'm also doing something on influencer marketing so what we wanted to understand was uh, uh, what kind of influencers uh, can have a greater impact on people everybody agrees that influencers marketing uh, influencers are the future of marketing and they uh have a great impact on many of our decisions uh, people trust them more and so on but even in influencers you have various kinds of influencers so we looked at employee influencers versus celebrity or a macro influencer and what we find is that an employee influencer has uh, far more impact on uh, people as compared to a celebrity or even a macro influencer uh and we find that what kind of language should Uh, these uh, these influencers use would you prefer them to use assertive language like buy it now versus uh, non assertive lo- language like it is worth buying and we find that people prefer non assertive language uh, when employees use non assertive language even uh, 
and they uh, they show greater preference for product purchase when employees use non assertive language of course when we did this uh, first study and found this we were like okay we have to look at male versus female influencer does it matter that uh, maybe people are uh, in a first study we only had female uh, uh, employee versus celebrity so we thought let's introduce even male uh, versus employee versus celebrity and we were not surprised to find that when you have female employees the preference is for non assertive language whereas if it was a male employee uh, consumers preferred them to use a more assertive language as compared to a non assertive uh, language uh, so but overall people showed in both our studies people showed strong preference for employees over celebrity or even macro influencers and strong preference for them using non assertive uh, versus uh, assertive language so these are two of my studies uh, both of them talking uh, engage looking at communities in different ways in one in which uh, consumers how they get empowered in the other how do consumers like to receive their uh, receive messages from people so uh, uh, arvind what uh, we are we taking questions in the end or i don't know uh, yes. if i have on, run out uh, of I'm time uh, no you are bang on time so thank you okay. very much for that yeah uh, so we'll we'll hold on for the question uh, for a little bit uh, let me go to uh, to nitin thank you i think those are very two very nicely described studies very informative uh, we should actually charge nitin for this and you know? i'm sure he's going to use some of this stuff uh, nitin <laughs> go ahead as long as he funds my future studies i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Akshay. I actually have a red diary, my personal diary, and I have actually taken notes. Pardon my handwriting, but I have actually taken notes. You've enlightened me, and whatever I'll say now uh, will not mean anything because you have said almost everything, right? But le let me let me try from whatever little knowledge I have. So uh, and Professor Avin, uh, sorry for uh, me being uh, rough as always, uh, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be very uh, straightforward. Uh, so I've spent close to 21 years in uh, building digital platforms in India. I've been very very lucky to uh, see almost four uh, generations of internet platforms, and one generation last four to five years uh, in in India. And internet is very fast, so a decade generally is only four or five years uh, in internet. So from monopoly of horizontals to too many choices of unicorns is the era we are into, right? We are into era of unicorns and uh, which are uh, building the businesses on consumer uh, data, which has been called data lakes. Now, when I started in year 2000, I, I got a chance to work for Bharti Airtel and I'll uh, pick uh, each and every brand from my journey. I'll try and uh, highlight my learnings in terms of communication and offering. Uh, Professor Ravin, that sounds good? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So Bharti Atil, right? So when uh, it was only two players, right? So uh, at, at that time, uh, Vodafone, very uh, limited market uh, share and, and Bharti Atil, which was majority. And it was an era of uh, 3310 mobile Nokia phones. And uh, the, the era of dial-up, uh, modems. So we used to um, use modems to uh, dial for internet and used to land on a portal which called uh, Mantra Online. That is something which I've handled. And people used to come for very basic information. What Professor uh, Akshya highlighted uh, very nicely, that was the era when the information was not very uh, qualitative. It's it more, more of uh, copy paste from the offline to online medium and thrown to the consumers. Uh, that was my understanding and limited understanding and, uh, you know, learning from Bharti Yetil, whatever you used to put on the portal generally gets uh, consumed. From there to India Times when the era of internet started. Now, India Times that time was the Makkah Medina, right? So shopping auctions travel, first time somebody sold uh, electronics online, somebody sold air tickets online now uh, and 
even then there was hardly any trust on the payment so uh, there was a lot of money which has been spent on building that trust initiating the market and getting that penetration so uh, credit card at that time was still not been uh, trusted so majority of the communication was around that sure shot delivery and trusting the cod cash on delivery as a mechanism so people used to do newspaper ads brands used to do newspaper ad and people used to come and buy and ultimately very few credit card payments maybe 5 to 10% and majority of the payment was happening still cod now from there i got a opportunity to briefly work for redif redif was uh, redif email at that time was huge and uh, my learning there was the communication from the end consumer perspective now first time i think brand used to uh, appreciate or uh, you can say start respecting the consumer boundaries okay and uh, the google got a lot of uh, traction started traction in india and read if uh, email from uh, these were early or could or could days actually yahoo mail was dominant and read if mail was huge india times mail was huge and from those days brands have started uh, pushing their offline spends to online so people got there was a lot of new markets and segments and uh, you know personas got created and brands started servicing them and that's the era of nokri nokri emerged so nokri emerged from pulling up job listings from newspapers and magazine and putting it up on a website i was the initial member i got all the learning <coughs> and people really got hooked on the convenience that the power of content the power of information was like you know actually cocaine right it's 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 so high you know you are always high that can you do it fast is it happening so conveniently i can actually apply i can apply to 50 jobs 100 jobs we actually had to put a cap okay that <laughs> in in one day you can't apply more than 50 jobs you know that is the era i saw and then from you know if you if you look at any times or horizontal to nokri is a vertical vertical then 99 acres happened then jeevan sathi happened then shiksha happened so my tenure at info edge has taught me that you can actually capture the whole life cycle of the consumer it's not only need based job applying you can actually create a value and make people marry through online and videos and photos give them a house or give them a house also ah, and give them a house and then give them the uh, platform so the children get educated so sanjeev chandani hitesh obroy are, are are you know they are legends complete life cycle and the power of multilingual we created a nokri gulf as a platform the power of segmentation a first nokri so what i've learned that every small segment every niche has a huge potential right we are we are talking now eight and a half years like we are now on 12 13 uh, then uh, the ipo so make my trip got listed yatra got listed redif got listed right so we are seeing close to 8 10 unicorns from india and consumers started getting lot of confidence the new era is coming in more and more startups coming in vc started coming funding started coming and we've started seeing b2b to, b to b2c startups c to c startups and the information became the new fuel right so it's not only about people started blogging people started making money on their own content you know uh, Uh, professor akshay talked about influencers and that's a great segment i can only tell you that you know it's not only everybody's an influencer it's not only about being a big influencer people started making money on their content that so we are in the era of uh, where the the content is the power we are in the era of ott so you know uh, even even uh, the biggest uh, broadband or or a tata sky now needs to have a ott uh, offering right that is another uh, big shift we are seeing
so ott are being more, more valued so what what are we seeing we are seeing that consumers are coming online to the brands who they trust they are coming for the value if the value is right they are they are giving an opportunity to a, even a new a new age brand so d2c is the thing why d2c emerge because people like experimentation they are they are willing to take a risk they are willing to give a new chance to the new brand that is the era of millennials we we call them uh, you know the the power of gen z which is majority of indians the population is you know what i keep saying is is our biggest strength and then there is a segment like mine you know who are always a deal hunter audience right in india because of our upbringing we always like uh, value of offer and that's the last man standing game which e-commerce companies and the payment companies are playing and that's when none of them are profitable and there is a segment of leisure uh, travelers and convenience we talked about but look at how the ott platforms ota platforms uh, news aggregators have emerged look at how a credit card company who makes maybe uh, hardly any revenue has been valued at in billions uh, no names uh, politically correct so people have started solving for bharat and india power of vernacular <laughs> content has changed india and and covid has actually boosted the penetration and the growth so we we've actually now equivalent to any any other mature economy that is the power of indian market is the best time to uh, being an entrepreneur and and start something but if you have if you have a courage of being customer first if you have a courage of being customer centricity driven organization if you have balls to be a design thinking organization that is the only way you can survive if you have a right potential and the right potential needs to be communicated that's why again the power of content and communication is not for the you is not to make the brand look good it's it simple is beautiful so it it is to convey to the right audience the right message with the right tonality right uh our audience of bharat needs to read and write content in their own language that's that's the most effective medium and we need to give the audience the choice so the next set of with a blockchain with uh, you know crypto and the web3 is going to be about content creators you need to give power to content creators so they make money and not only the platform we have to give power to the consumer so i get paid for i my page views my eyeballs and my time that is the era we are entering into we will see at least 30 40 unicorns in next 2 3 years who will actually work on this concept right i'm trying to build one such i'm i'm trying to raise one such baby uh, uh, professor akshay is smiling and uh, i i hope uh, dr avin will uh, guide me well and give me enough young leaders so i don't go wrong uh, dr avin I, i i hope that i've i'm i've finished on on time like always thank thank you so much uh, uh, nitin ji uh, pleasure to hear the way in which you kind of summarize the growth over the years and how the internet platforms have changed and what has changed over time uh, so again i'm going to hold the questions there are there are there is already one that i can see at least but i'm going to hold the questions and uh, invite uh, dr samardas for his views especially on the customer engagement online customer engagement part great thank you thank you so much uh, uh, arvin Uh, it was an amazing landscape you showed uh, nitin it was great hearing about the entire landscape uh, in the last uh, 30 years what you observed in india let me quickly share my screen uh, i unfortunately have a slightly longer presentation but i hope i'll uh, keep it to uh, my time limit can you guys see my screen yes <laughs> okay so uh, First let me begin by thanking uh, Professor Sahai once again for inviting me to the session. I've 
I'm so excited to be back at my alma mater. Uh, this picture is very evocative. This is where a lot of quizzes were failed. You know, these are the entrance to the classrooms. Uh, it brings back a lot of good and bad memories, but it is always a privilege to be back at the Institute. And uh, I think it's been like 37 years since I graduated, uh, but it has been the most profound uh, experience of my life uh, when I was at IMA. Uh, let me briefly show you our research lab. This is a state-of-the-art digital research lab in Orlando, Florida. I started this lab in 2002 uh, when the internet was taking off. Uh, long story short, I, I actually was a professor at that time. I went to my department chair said I need to build a lab because what people say and what they do on the web is never the same. All the rules of marketing I'm teaching at the college is probably going to be out of date very soon. Uh, I didn't get the funding. I was, I was just listening to Professor Sahai. He's got the funding to start his own lab. I didn't get the funding, but I got permission to start my own company. So that's how we got started. We conduct very sophisticated lab experiments uh, and watch behaviors using eye trackers, biometrics, facial muscle coding, and all that. We also conduct interviews. We do all kinds of in-lab surveys. So the whole idea is to build 360 degree views of the consumer. And uh, uh, over the years, you know, it's been great. We've, do, we've been doing this work and we've built a lot of very powerful models we use to understand consumers. And uh, here's a partial list of our clients. Uh, so since 2002, we've probably done over 400 lab projects and we worked across verticals with some of the biggest brands in America. We're still a boutique firm. It's, it's pretty much like a, a academic lab, but we, 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 we have very fortunate that we have all these big clients and we worked in several countries around the world. So the lab is actually mobile. We can set up labs anywhere in the world and we've done uh, bunch of work even in India. So this has been a phenomenal experience and uh, you know if I had the freedom to publish all the work we have done in the lab well, we would have probably had at least 20 to 30 papers to get tenure in 10 or 12 big universities but you know it's, it's, it's great to do all this work. So like uh, Nitin was talking about uh, in the digital world the consumer is in control and the power has shifted you know this is the big big deal the power has shifted from the marketer to the consumer and i personally think this is a golden age for the consumers so earlier it was possible to spend big bucks on tv advertising and then you hope to build a brand and it, that was also the biggest barrier for smaller companies to enter the market but today we see, as uh, uh, Nitin was talking about, we see Gen Z consumers in the lab who don't even watch TV. And uh, you ask them, hey, did you see this ad? And they say, what ad? Uh, where did it come up? I, you know, I call this uh, consumer centricity, exactly like what Nitin was talking about. And uh, I'll try to explain how this thing is happening with four forces starting with uh, digital advertising. Now, in my presentation, I have got a few complex models, so I, I will probably not take too long to explain all that, but very briefly, just to give you an idea, uh, look at how uh, TV commercials versus digital advertising, how the landscape has changed. Uh, we know that most TV commercials, you know, they work through what we call the peripheral route to processing. And here you have a BMW Super Bowl commercial, which was just aired in the Super Bowl this year. It was pure theater. People loved it, but there was very little about the car. You know, they don't really want you to think about the car, because if you really thought hard, you would go and buy a Tesla instead of a very expensive BMW, okay? On the other hand, when it comes to digital ads, you know, they are actually destined to work through what we call the central route to processing. They got to engage consumers in a very active manner. And the ads have to have something useful in them 
to engage the consumer and take take them to the finish line. So uh, let me show you how that happens. Here's a very simplified model. It doesn't look that simple, but it is actually very simplified. The actual model is way more complex. Imagine if you're on a website and there is a banner ad on the top. So what do you do? You ignore it and scroll down. But from the corner of your eye, what we call pre-conscious processing, if you notice something interesting in the ad, your eyes are drawn to it in a split second. It's like, you know, if you're driving and you suddenly slam your brakes even before you realize it, somebody has jumped in front of your car. You know, that's a split second processing. If you, if you have that pre-conscious pre processing going on for your ad, then there's a chance that somebody will actually look at that, okay? And once you get people's attention, the game is not yet over. Now you've got to engage the consumer, and I'm talking about digital display advertising here. You've got to engage the consumer both cognitively as well as emotionally. And there are a series of steps between grabbing attention to actually uh, concluding the advertising's impact in terms of brand shift, they have to go through a chain of effects. And the ad can break down at any one of these points, you know. It can break down at the first uh, uh, itself when it fails the pre-conscious test. But even when you are lucky and you've got the pre-conscious attention, it can still break down in the chain of effects from pre-conscious to the brand equity shift. Ideally, you want the ad to engage on both the channels, emotional as well as persuasion. It may not happen all the time. Sometimes you just engage them emotionally and hope that they like the ad and there will be a brand shift. But for most advertising to work in digital media, you got to have these three very powerful effects. So how, what, how is it impacting advertising? You know, here's some work we actually did in our own lab. The first one we call a brand blocking effect. This is a big brand. Uh, obviously the brand I'm showing here is not the brand we researched, but it was an equally big brand. And the ad was not being processed and we tested it in the lab. So what was happening was we noticed that people's eyes are getting into the ad at the pre-conscious level. And then they are bouncing out. The eyes are bouncing out of the ad. When we probed this in the lab, what we learned was that people pre-consciously notice the brand logo. It is at a pre-conscious level. They have not yet got full awareness of what they're watching. They notice the brand logo. They felt that they knew everything about the brand and the eyes went out. So millions of dollars worth of advertising was getting wasted because of the brand itself. So the moral of the story is if it's a new thing you're, you're, uh, you're proposing and there's a brand extension, uh, construct the ad so that some novelty is seen first. That there's something new here, and then the ad will get processed. The second case here is of uh, uh, the big difference between television advertising and digital advertising. You know, in television advertising, it's like a story. There is a beginning, there is a middle, there is an end. On digital media, the eyes go in and out all the time. So you really don't have the luxury of walking somebody through a storyline and storylines as we know are the bread and butter of advertising industry so how do you script advertising it gets really hard the third example is uh, how media companies are using all this knowledge to get eyeballs onto their ads and we have several media companies we try to help them optimize ad gaze on their ads so there's a whole concept of agile content ads, and we were some of the, the some of the earliest work in this field was done by us, where we we could tell the companies how to create what we call proactive ads, reactive ads, or neutral ads, and the whole idea was the editorial content has to have some relationship with the advertising you're showing, and uh, you can increase your eye gaze by 200 percent or 300 percent if you know how to link it. And it, it may look obvious how this phenomena works, but the truth is that uh, if it is too obvious to consumers that you're trying to influence them by showing something in the editorial content, that they won't believe it. So how to do this so it stays below the radar and it still gets your uh, you know, eye gaze going. 
So that's one great example of how digital advertising is so fundamentally different from uh, the other kind of advertising. Now, the second case I want to Sa actually... I'm going to have to ask you to kind of try and summarize and close in maybe a couple of minutes, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, basically, uh, yeah. So here's another very uh, important thing which uh, uh, we notice all the time. You know, people think about websites and they think about websites as kind of clunky information chaos, but actually websites are the most powerful way of building brand equity. I mean, you have somebody who's in, on your website for 30 minutes, 20, 40 minutes at a time trying to solve something, trying to do something. And in that period, you can develop uh, a lot of brand equity related things like uh, brand personality, uh, interactive experience. So how to do that and how to actually use websites as a way to build brands. And here are some examples where, uh, you know, we've used digital assets to build the brand or we have used health system branding uh, using the website. Very, very powerful way to actually uh, build brand and to get conversion. Here's another example of how digital tools, they should not just be functional. You know, they have to emphasize the functional utility, but you can breathe life into these tools by giving them personality, intelligence, voice, and interactivity. So websites, I think, are the mo most neglected, but the most powerful way to communicate with your consumers. And then you have this uh, situation of omni-channel. You know, people talk about omni-channel all the time, uh, but the truth is that big legacy brands are meeting their Waterloo on the internet, you know. Uh, big brands are getting nibbled to death by these small brands and uh, Nitin was referring to that phenomena. And what is the big problem here? The traditional model of omnichannel, which says advertising uh, on the omnichannel is a linear thing. You know, you do advertising, then you have these touch points. And then uh, hopefully the consumer will walk into a retail store and buy a product. Now that is patently a false model. What we really know is the internet is the wild, wild west. Once you're on the internet, the consumer finds all kinds of false rankings and reviews, several micro brands, information and misinformation. And the legacy brand, before you know it, has lost all the uh, you know charisma and has eroded in terms of market share. And we have seen this thing in lab experiments time and again. Then you come to this whole phenomenon of consumer social media. And this is actually really scary. We're trying to even now trying to get our minds around it. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg knows that we are all addicted. We get shots of dopamine every time we see a light. Okay, so this is uh, an area where we still are trying to figure out how to communicate. So what is the bottom line here? This is the heartbreaking thing. What started as a consumer promise, the consumer at the center of the universe, that may not be true anymore. You know, we, we've got uh, good and bad actors who have no accountability between the brand and the consumer. So these intermediaries are scary because they can tap into the enormous persuasive powers of digital communication. So the next frontier which uh, we have to deal with is how to combat misinformation. And it is not just in consumer marketing, it's also impacting uh, a lot of other things. So I thought I'll just give a quick summary of uh, the way this uh, landscape is emerging and uh, hopefully uh, that would have made Thank some you sense. Thank you so much, Summer. I think some very powerful ideas across all the three presentations. Um, so uh, I'm going to start off with actually you, Summer, because uh, yeah. it's really fresh in my mind just now. I've taken notes from all three, of course. Uh, let me start off with the point that you made, uh, very interesting and, and relevant point, which is that online digital advertisements do not have the time to build the story, uh, which is quite true, right? Um, and the human brain is configured in a way that it likes stories. And the human brain is also configured in a way that makes it want the dopamine kicks that it gets from affirmation mm -hmm. or comments or uh, some kind of engagement that some reaction that they see from the website or something when they click on something, something happens, right? So if it is not going to be stories, what is it going to be is the question that I have for you. Uh, I'm going to have to request you to kind of 
dwell on that for a few seconds because there are related questions for the other two also which i want to kind of relate uh, to what they said right the element yeah. of digital advertisement story online now if i go to akshaya's presentation uh, especially the second part where she said that in terms of assertive and non assertive language employee influencers males are seen to be wanted to do assertive and females are wanted to do non assertive and uh, that's more effective is what your study kind of showed now if i link that to the idea of effectiveness online for the influencer as a person is facing the influencer the influencer also does not have the time perhaps if i take the same context to build the story so the influencer is probably depending on their credibility and the question to you akshaya therefore is does that credibility carry the message over the hump to the customer despite the lack of the time that one has to build the story right so that's the question for you and then combining these two and coming to nitin therefore for nitin one of the key challenges one knows is getting people to actually come on board the super app that he is kind of bringing to the table for the group now for the super app therefore adoption is the critical part and the second part is once i have downloaded that app i need to start using it i can i may have 30 apps on my phone but i might only be using 7 8 9 uh so this has to be the app that i'm going to have to use so therefore if i look at both what uh you akshay and and you summer said how do you see that in the context of what nitin needs and nitin therefore what are your views which way would you fall uh in in terms of what akshay and summer had said so those are the yeah. questions uh shall we start with summer and then nitin and then akshay this time yeah no that's really great the way you linked all the three presentation uh, uh, arvin uh, the the fact about digital advertising is that uh, you got to engage the preconscious in a split second but once you get them into your ad there should be enough there to keep the person engaged with your ad for much longer than 30 seconds you know that's the beauty of digital advertising uh if you lose them you lose them but if you get them and you have enough cognitive and emotional material in the ad uh they should stay engaged with you and then they should actually go from your ad to your other assets to your website to more, to get more information uh so we have we have done this kind of study where we have seen that uh, once they get into your ad just like a rabbit hole you know they stay there and and they get more and more information so in designing these ads one has to look for that kind of an effect interesting nitin sure so uh, yes uh, dr summer was right it's it's uh, storytelling is absolutely important but uh, the content form has been shifted the content form and the display has been shifted from 30 seconds to 10 12 seconds and user decides in 3 seconds so you have to have a very simple yet compelling story right and i link that so let's say that you tell a communication and ultimately you want to retain the consumer so first is engage then to acquire then you have to actually retain the consumer that's where you have to actually solve a core problem his need rather than having a fancy solution it doesn't work i need to solve a problem can i give you your boarding gate and a belt information as simple as this right right can can i give you a meet and greet service can i give you a short cab booking a short cab booking on a for a woman at a 12 pm night which she knows that has a high brand trust there is no competition we need to create our own ecosystem and you know so the other brands whether there is a coffee or a airline will actually come on the same ecosystem so it's collaborative rather than a competition and use the ecosystem to solve the consumer problem that's how we see it and super app is not about only app it's about creating all the digital assets and facets and be where the consumer is is not about because app uninstall rates are huge in india 
right? So it, you know, why not mobile, just a mobile browser, get, get a mobile number, get an OTP, solve this problem and, and the job is done. So if you have a compelling offering, the consumer will stick around, right? Then the other problem, the multifold problem is that how you re-engage with him again. That's where you have to create value. So how you bring him back? Okay, Akshay. Yeah, uh, so this time I should say that Nitin, you stole some of my butts. Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, Arvind, you did a beautiful job in uh, linking everything. So I'll borrow a little bit from Dr. Summer's presentation where he talks about the difference between digital and TV advertisements and link stories to that. So if you look at TV advertisements, you are just a recipient of a story. When you look at the digital advertisement, especially I'm talking about social media, in, uh, Instagram and influencers and all that, you're building the story along with the influencer. The story, it's not just given to you. You are an active creator of the story. So, uh, and uh, you are in on it. The influencers are not just giving you a message. They're asking you for your comments and they're giving you snippets of their life and you are imagining uh, how their lives are. They are telling you that, okay, this is the brand I use. Uh, and then le letting you decide, uh, letting you imagine how it works and how the brand has changed their life or helped them life and how it will also influence your life in a different way. And they're asking you to share it with them. So, and these stories get, uh, your stories then get uh, shared by them on their reels or on their pages and so on. So everybody is actively, we are actively creating stories. So it's snowboard like uh, somebody creates a story, posts it on TV and you receive it and you know, okay, this is how it works. So stories definitely, I think the place for stories has become all the more important uh, than uh, before because now everybody's in on it. I'm absolutely right about uh, getting them first hooked. After that, they will watch content for a very, very long time. I mean, now people spend so much time on YouTube watching really long videos. And that's because uh, they, they are getting the information that they need, that they want, and they would like. So if anything, uh, once you get them in the first five seconds and you uh, share uh, the, uh, you talked about D2C brands, right? Both of them talked about D2C brands. And especially I saw a dollar shape club over there. So dollar shape clubs talk, uh, talks about having people hooked in the first five seconds on the YouTube ad. And they think that first five seconds is what is important. You get them in the first five seconds, they're going to stick with you for a much longer time. And that could be uh, two minutes, 20 minutes or 30 seconds. So definitely uh, stories are important and uh, stories don't get built just by one, I guess, one uh, reel or one image, but uh, it happens through several of them. So, yeah. So uh, we have some questions which have come up in the Q&A box. So the first question is uh, addressed to, to uh, Akshaya. It says your views on FOMO in, re in regards to the study. Uh, in, in regards to my study, I... Uh, we didn't necessarily uh, look at FOMO, but we saw that users used internet differently. And I guess uh, uh, active users probably felt they, uh, they need to share more often. And that's, so everybody didn't probably feel FOMO the same way. If I may say some felt uh, FOMO when they didn't post information and some felt FOMO when they didn't read enough information. So FOMO was, uh, experienced in a different manner, I would say. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so we have an in, some kind of a arrow diagram over here from Rishabh Sachin. In, he's saying credibility, the influencer, the message, engaging the pre-conscious met, mental image generation, but how do you bring the customer back? And for some reason, he's asking me to highlight. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not the panelist, uh, Mr. Rishabh Sachan. So I'm going to hand it right back, lob it to the panelist. How do you bring the customer back? And maybe at the end, I will add my two cents. Uh, let me start off with uh, Nathan. How do you bring the customer back? 
So shall you, I just say that you had mentioned, you know, give the customer, you know, a woman at 12 o'clock at night, a trusted brand and so on. So that is, would that be your answer? That's how you bring the customer back? So, uh, so Professor, you uh, bring the customer back by either seeking a feedback, if it's a deal hunter, so right messages, right offering for the consumer segment. So giving you a reason, a, a persona a reason, right? Say if, if you're a deal hunter, I know that you bought something because of discount to give you another discount, I'll, I'll get you back. Somebody bought because of the trust and the credibility, getting him a, a rate, the experience and a review, getting the person back. Somebody bought a service and adding an experience and selling an upsell, cross sell. That's how you get a consumer back. So it's not only because only for the transactions, some it's, it's for the trust and reviews and the feedback and the engagement. And of course, if you, the most successful brand are the brands which have made the consumer, their brand ambassadors, look at Amazon, look at Airbnb, look at Uber, right? I, I agree. Uh, if I may interrupt, but you know, uh, the the issue then is I would need data to be able to assess you know whether the guy joined me because uh, of the discount or whether the guy joined me because of the reviews or the, whether the guy joined me now where is that data the discount data perhaps I can I can catch hold of reasonably so, okay but the other stuff is more difficult so uh, so uh, I, I disagree there sometimes because most of these ads so funnel so if you understand mouth of a funnel because you have multiple mouth of the funnel you know that and and these days data with the tools with a ga with mix panel you can actually track each and everything you know how much time is spending which section is opening what how is interacting how is it moving what sites is you know exiting if it's a drop customer you can get him back by giving a coupon on a message or an email i i clearly know each and every consumer segment on my platform that what he's doing and i can predict very well so first time consumers not not really you have to hit and try but if i'm engaging you second time third time and you're spending time on my platform i can literally put the outline and then adding keep keep adding uh, data value okay understood um i was going to come back and say uh, that sounds a little far-fetched because I don't know of any company that has managed to get that much data, but then you added the qualification second, third, fourth time. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask any further on that one. Uh, let me change the question slightly for Akshaya and for Summer. Um, in terms of bringing the customer back, right? Uh, for Summer especially, what do you see is the role of this pre-conscious, unconscious in right. embedding the idea of the brand that I have interacted with or the advertisement that I have interacted with deeper rather than just reasoning to bring the customer back. And for uh, for Akshaya, in terms of her second, um, uh, sorry, the first one where she said that, you know, WhatsApp group seems to seem to promote more community-based purchases, right? Um, what would be your thoughts on bringing customers back? Is it easier for people who are community-based, who have community-based behavior uh, or individual behaviors? So, uh, Summer and then Akshay. Yeah. So, here's the advertising fallacy we are suffering from. You know, we feel that you need to entertain the customer uh, and, uh, and that's the way you get customers. The truth is, uh, you solve the customer's problem like Nitin was saying and do it in a delightful way if they are finding a solution in your platform they'll keep coming back and and that's the only sustainable model you know it's not uh, just by giving a lot of entertainment on your advertising or on your uh, platform it's basically make the customer happy tell them which gate they have to go to tell them where their baggage is and do it in a very delightful manner and in an intelligent manner and you're building your brand that way you're actually uh, not only getting the customer back you're getting customers friends back you know so it's the most powerful way of doing business Akshay? yeah yeah uh, i think uh, customers come back when they feel both empowered in both ways not just individually but also at a community level uh, again going back to these groups uh, when consumers get an one is receiving information that empowers you but also giving back information 
sharing information empowers you so an opportunity to both receive and share information is what is going to bring consumers back and that's the when we look at empowerment we have always looked at it uh, in a silo we have looked at individual empowerment uh, alone but we have not looked at individual in a community empowerment we need both for the consumers to come back while one empowers them individually uh, where they get information but also sharing information uh, feels uh, as and makes them part of community as when they're giving it back and that is what brings both i think both these aspects are essential for the consumer okay. to come back uh, we're almost out of time so, so i'm going to take uh, one minute to add by uh my comments also to rishabh sachan's uh, said a uh, question in terms of getting customers back um if i put together what all three of uh, our panelists have said it is about sharing of information it is about how one is able to engage them and uh, provide the satisfaction tell the story right and so on uh, for me i would add one more dimension i would say that the customer will come back when he feels happy when he feels valued now the feeling of happiness and the feeling of being valued may or may not come only from the cognitive dimensions of the service that you are providing uh and in that sense uh the question that i would kind of leave the panelists and the audience with is uh what is the relationship between the experience that you have provided to the customer whether in the form of the service online or through the advertisement that you have just shared with him in terms of the cognitive cognition and the emotion the conscious and the unconscious uh so how much of conscious reason was there how much of unconscious reason was there how much of conscious emotion was there how much of unconscious emotion was there and one argument or one question or one observation that i would leave on the table is what is actually the mix of these uh, dimensions in the particular service or advertisement or product or benefit that you are providing whether it's online or offline and arguably to the extent i can get into into the preconscious or the unconscious dimension of the information processing of the person who is there uh, the easier i make it uh, i the greater the probability that the guy comes back uh, to me and that part is essentially about if i am on the smartphone maybe the the, kick, the click stream of the keys that i'm using is better or the way the website my eyes go over the website that is easier uh, in addition to what uh mr said he kind of shared with us which is yes i do need to provide that ultimate end benefit the lady has to get the car at 12 o'clock at night that definitely is going to make a difference but getting that lady to use that app in front uh has to have these elements so we are over time uh it's it's uh, some time past 8 o'clock here in the evening so it must be like what 9:30 in the morning for summer uh, right, he must yeah. be big to to get uh to his work i guess but he has spared us some time in the morning so thank you all very much uh mr sethi dr vijay lakshmi uh and dr das for taking the time sparing the time really appreciate your sharing the gift of your time for uh this panel and uh i think all of us uh, akshaya and summer and i probably will button hold you nitin for more insights from the world of yes. practice and if there's something we can okay. contribute uh yeah. we'd be very happy to Thank you so much again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we move towards the announcement for the best paper, which is split. Okay. so now we are just left with one pleasant task uh uh and we have with us mr parag amodkar hi parag how are you hello i'm very nice to see you again uh, unfortunately just over the 
computer screen not in person not at all a pleasure to <laughs> have you taking the time to be here and also for sponsoring the prizes for the best research uh, really grateful to you and to toby for doing this and uh, i am going to hand over the presentation to richa who is going to take us through the presentations our two winners are uh, pradeep and vanika i don't know whether they are here or not uh, but over to you richa so uh, we have uh, two winners for the award um one is the uh, the winner for the uh, award for excellence in research by toby bro global leader in eye tracking goes to mr pradeep k who belongs to iit madras um, and his paper for the paper titled effect of brand and product design in product as a service an automotive practice evaluation of customer lease versus buy decision so prag first i think we can uh, congratulate uh, mr pradeep he is online he's joined us online yes uh, i mean it was an excellent uh, uh, presentation mr pradeep and also the the topic we have chosen is is uh, really relevant because uh, if you look at the industry a lot of uh, automotive segment is a benchmark and then if you compare it with any other economy there there are uh, people leasing a lot of cars and in india it's not yet the practice so it's a, it's a very interesting uh, uh, research paper and uh, good luck for you to explore more in that on that topic um so this is uh, pradeep i'm not sure if you can hear me but uh, wanted to thank uh, we can hear you loud and clear pradeep well uh, yeah um thanks um for um, the um, award um, i very much uh, value that um, to both um, uh, i am ahmedabad and the uh, uh, center for uh, you know variable science and as well as uh, to the sponsors who are offering this uh, award i'm um, delighted to be offered uh, this uh, best uh, paper um, award thank you very much actually i would like to mention it's a cash prize of 75000 that toby is uh, um, toby uh, has sponsored for the best paper and uh, congratulations pradeep and the second honor that we are giving to the second best paper that is there uh, goes to miss varnika she belongs to flame university and uh, we are awarding her um we are honoring the effort that they have put in the study for the paper titled consumer perception of luxury products manufactured by robots versus humans a comparative study and uh, it is a cash prize of 25000 uh, which toby has bestowed and uh, uh, parag probably you can take the opportunity and congratulate the winners yeah uh, congratulations uh, once again and uh, on on uh, i really would want to uh, read through the paper once again and uh, it's it's an exciting topic to to research because uh, we really value if you look at uh, a store like kaveri in uh, in bangalore it's all handcrafted products and it's very highly valued and uh, at the same time when we look at other luxury products we don't really know the origin so yeah uh, really good work there so uh, the authors will be contacted uh, uh, through nsc and tob directly um, so this brings us to the end of the two day conference that we had and uh, a good closure to the conference i think i would request professor sahay to give some closing comments Uh, so let me first begin by thanking toby for being the sponsor of the prizes for the conference i think it it is fantastic when uh, corporate organizations are able to support uh, research in our country because i think we need to support more research in in, in our country so thank you again parag for taking the uh, time and also for bringing to table the resources to motivate our researchers in the country part of the reason that we have this conference is to increase the uh, number of researchers who are engaging in behavioral science research using tools like eye trackers and eeg and so on and so forth and uh, to the extent that researchers see 
uh, some motivators and incentives like the ones that you provide, it helps to build the ecosystem in the country. Uh, so that's uh, one observation that I have. Thank you very much again, Parag. Uh, the second observation is that this particular conference that we have started, it's kind of in its infancy. This is our second iteration. And uh, over a period of time, we would like to be able to build it up into uh, the conference to come to in the area of behavioral science uh, in this part of the world. And so hopefully from the next year onwards, we will see a larger pool of papers and an even better pool of papers uh, than we have had this year. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, for all the efforts. I should take the opportunity also to thank the, the team that has put it together. Uh, so I'm the kind of the figurehead in front that is doing the talking, but the people who have actually done most of the work are sitting right here. With me, you can see one of them. One is Richa Negam, who can, you can see on the screen. There are two other people here, uh, Kunal and Muskan, uh, who work at the NSC Center for Behavioral Science, who have been instrumental in putting it all together. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for taking the time. Good night. Godspeed. God See you all next year, hopefully. Thank you.